when we're estimating each number needs to be rounded to one significant figure. One significant figure we start counting from the beginning of the number and we don't include any zeros unless we've already started counting. So in this first example the first significant figure is the 3. We always check the next number, if it's 5 and above it rounds up and if it's 4 and below it rounds down or you could think of it as staying the same. So 3.8 is going to round up to 4 and we multiply that by 5 because 5 is the first significant figure from this number and the 2 tells us to round down. So 4 times 5 is 20. You could say it's roughly equal to that and you could use the wiggly equals line, so 20 would be our answer for the first one. For question number 2, 4.98 times 2.31, we're going to say that that is 5 multiplied by 2 and so that gives us an answer of 10. For question number 3, our first significant figure is the 5. The next number is a 6 which rounds up, so this becomes 0 0.6 multiplied by 10. 9 is the first significant figure and the 7 tells us to round up. 0 0.6 times 10 is 6. So that's our answer for question number 3. Question number 4, 0 0.23 times 0 0.86. The first significant figure is the 2. The 3 tells us to round down, so this becomes 0 0.2 to one significant figure multiplied by 0 0.9. 0 0.2 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.18. When we're multiplying decimals, the number of numbers after the decimal point in total stays the same. So there are two numbers in the question after the decimal point, so in our answer there are also two numbers after the decimal point. 11.2 add the square root of 50.52 all over 4.32. Now we're going to round that to 10 to one significant figure. Add. Now square roots work a little bit differently. I don't want to round to the square root of 50 because 50 is not a number I know how to square root in my head. So I want to go to the closest square number. Now your square numbers are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, uh, 49 and so on. Okay, They are like 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, those numbers. So the square root of 50.52, I'm actually going to go for the square root of 49 because we know what that is. We know that the square root of 49 is 7. And I'm going to divide that by 4.32 to one significant figure, which is 4. So that's going to be 10 add 7 divided by 4, which is 17 divided by 4. Now to do that in our heads, we would half it and half it again. But I'm just going to use the bus stop method here. 17 divided by 4, it goes in 0 times, and then 4 into 17 goes 4 times. We've got 1 left over to carry over, so we're going to carry it onto the 0 because there's nothing in the next column. 4 into 10 goes twice, we need a decimal point there because there's 1 below, and then we've got 2 left over, and 4 into 20 goes 5 times, so it is 4.25. Question number 6, I've got 9.29 add root 35.1 divided by 0 0.48. Now 9.29 is going to become 9. The square root of 35.1, I'm going to go to the closest square number, which is 36, and I'm going to divide that by 0 0.5. 4 is your first significant figure, and the 8 tells you to round up, so 0 0.5. When we are dividing by 0 0.5, actually what happens is we are doubling the number, because we're saying, let's say for example, if you've got 3 pieces of paper, if you divide them all into halves, you end up with 6 pieces of paper, so dividing into halves is actually the same as doubling. So we're going to do 9 add 6, because that's the square root of 36, divided by 0 0.5, which is 15 divided by 0 0.5. How many 0 0.5s would fit into 15? Well, it would fit in 30 times. And that was all roughly equal to. Okay, great. Question number 7. And we're doing the square root of everything inside the uh, root here. So we've got 27.2, which rounds to 30, to one significant figure, minus 2, to one significant figure, all divided by 7 to one significant figure. That is 28 divided by 7, which is 4. And we're doing the square root of that. So the square root of 4 is 2. We're saying what number times by itself makes 4, and that's going to be 2. Question number 8, 43.1, add the square root of 96.8, all divided by 0 0.193. So I'm going to make that 40 to one significant figure. Add the square root of, now let's use the closest square number, which is going to be 100 all divided by 0 0.2 to one significant figure. That is 40 add 10, all divided by 0 0.2, which is 50 divided by 0 0.2. Now the same principle applies. If I had three pieces of paper 
and I divided them all into 0.2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I'm going to get five pieces of paper for each hole. So 0.2 fits into each hole five times. So 50 divided by 0.2 is the same as multiplying by 5, which is 250. Okay, question number 9. 0.96 add the square root of 8.03. So 0.96, the first significant figure, is the 9. And the 6 tells us to round up. Now we can't put 10 there, so we're going to have to put 1. Add. Now the square root of 9 is my closest square number, all divided by 2. So that's 1 add 3 divided by 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And question number 10. The square root of 9.98 add 32.8 times 3.41 all over 1.32. Now when we're doing this question we need to remember that bib mass is always something we need to think about and here we're going to do this part first. Multiplication is more important than addition. So let's do our roughly equal to and let's estimate all the numbers first. So the square root of 10 add 30 times 3 all divided by 1. Now we're going to do this part first. So it becomes the square root of 10 add 90 divided by 1, which is just the square root of 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. Okay, question number 11. Below is a rectangle A, B, C, D. Estimate the area of the rectangle. So area is base times height. So I'm going to need to multiply the base by the height. And I'm going to estimate each side. So it's going to be 4 times 0 0.8. This one is roughly 0 0.8 to one significant figure, and this one is roughly 4 to one significant figure. 4 times 0 0.8 is 3.2, so we're going to say 3.2 centimetres squared for our units. Then estimate the perimeter of the rectangle. So perimeter is when you add together all the sides, so I'm going to do 4, add 0 0.8, add 4, add 0 0.8 is the distance all the way around the outside, and that would be 4 add 4 gives us 8, and 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 gives us 1.6, so in total, 9.6 centimetres. Okay, question number 12. The area of a square is 65 centimetres squared. Estimate the perimeter of the square. So we know that when we find the area of a square, however wide it is, however tall it is, we times that together. So x times x needs to equal 65. We don't know what the square root of 65 is, because I want to know what number times by itself makes 65. Now, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I do know that the square root of 64, which is very close, is 8. So 8 times 8 would be a very good estimate. So I'm then going to do for the perimeter, 8 add 8 add 8 add 8, because that would be the distance around the outside, and that would be 32 centimetres.